Warlock Defense here. Tonight we want to finish up what we started in talking about holsters and drawing from the holster. The last video we did, we, we called it uh, When Revolvers Ruled, and we talked about uh, revolvers and uh, some of the philosophy of some of the men who uh, carried revolvers for their duties and, uh, and wrote extensively about self-defense and, uh, and police work and military work with revolvers. Tonight, though, we want to talk about the semi-automatics and we want to talk about some men who are uh, writing currently and some of their comments about the draw. So we're going to uh, have a semi-automatic uh, tonight. I've got my, my trusty SIG uh, with me. Again, we've cleared it already previously to make sure that um, it's, um, it's going to be safe. This is the gun uh, that we're using for the demonstration and uh, drawing the pistol in combat. This is a Sig Sauer P6 uh, police model. This one's been modified with better trigger, uh, internal parts, short reset trigger, uh, but this is the gun we like very much and this is the one that's being demonstrated. This is a gun that uh, we picked up for $325 at a pawn shop, sent it to the Sig Custom Shop, had them work it up, uh, into a very nice concealed carry gun. So, anyway, we uh, we like this gun. We just wanted to show you a closer view of the gun that we are actually using. So tonight, uh, or this afternoon, I guess it is, we're going to talk about uh, two two men. David Kennick. Uh, he wrote a book called Armed Response, and we're also going to mention some things that uh, were said by Masad Io and his book, Combat Handgunnery. Now, I've met Mr. Iope, and I tell you, he is a very fine person. Uh, I respect him very much. I told him so, that I respected the work he did, and I appreciate all the things he's done and written. And so I take what he, what he says and what he writes um, to heart, because he has been there, and he's done that, and he spent his whole life, uh, adult life, learning and writing and teaching about this stuff. So. Uh, so I, I think it's important and, and I hope you will uh, also take it that way. These are some of the books that we recommend and we know in this section we're talking about now on pistol, on uh, drawing the combat uh, or drawing the pistol in combat. We recommended uh, Combat Handgunnery and Armed Response by David Kennick. Would also like to mention that uh, Masad Io but al has also written a book called Concealed Carry, besides Combat Handgunnery, and we'd also like to throw in the book uh, Handgun Combatives by Dave Spaulding. We like all these, we've read them, and uh, we recommend them to you. We think that uh, there's definitely something to be learned uh, from each of these. And uh, we, we think if you read them, you will definitely, uh, it'll be worth it. So for this section on the pistol, drawing the pistol in combat, these are the books we recommend. But especially combat, handgunnery, and armed response. The other ones are good as well, especially for concealed carry and people uh, just in general in the combat handgunnery. So uh, on the left... Concealed Carry by Masad Ayob, and then Combat Hand Gunnery, also by Masad Ayob, David Kennick, Armed Response, and Dave Spaulding, Handgun Combatives. So if you get these, they're all currently out there. There may be actually Combat Hand Gunnery and Concealed Carry may actually be updated now. The next edition may be out, but um, we could we really uh, think you should get those and read them. So we recommend these highly and uh, hope it's helpful to you. So let's talk about what uh, David Kennick said. First of all, and this is real common sense stuff, he said that the first good hit defines the winner. Uh, and also that your draw can determine the outcome of a fight. So uh, if that's true, which it makes sense to me, uh, you've got to practice ways of gaining speed and accuracy while maintaining safety. All right. He says that for practice you should use your carry gun, your carry holster, uh, you should use full power ammo, you should use the clothes you wear if this is what you normally wear on the street or to work, 
and this is what you should wear while you're practicing and um, and you should go to a range or someplace where you can uh, make arrangements with somebody that you can actually draw and fire with the full power ammo so you can get some real practice with it. The ultimate goal of course is muscle memory and unconscious competence which we, we mentioned in our other video. You want to get your arm, your hand, your, your grip, your where your finger placement goes. You want to get all that down so that in the uh, you know the heat of the moment then you can actually flow into all those things automatically. Train, train, train so that when your brain goes mushy, when you're attacked um, or you're under a lot of stress then you can automatically uh, get your gun out. You want to be able to do it automatically because you don't want to have to be thinking oh what kind of holster did I put on? Do I have a thumb brake holster? Do I have a level two retention holster or what, ex what exactly am I carrying? You don't want to have to have those thoughts. You want to have it um, just flow smoothly. So it means that you keep things consistent. Same holster, same gun, those kind of things. All right. He also said always practice for accuracy. Speed will come with competence. And, um, and he mentioned that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Uh, fast movements, if you're moving real fast, they're jerky, they overextend your arms, and if you remember from the other video, you want to be smooth. So you want to have a minimum of motion, so you want to be smooth. Um, you don't want to have to overcompensate for too much body movement. All right, Mr. Uh, Ayu, he said that an armed citizen with a carry permit may not be able to draw his or her weapon in public as soon as a uniformed officer when the danger is not yet clarified, so, because a uniformed officer has more privileges uh, than, than an average uh, citizen does. So, thus, he says, drawing quickly is important. Drawing quickly is important. He goes on to quote Ray Chapman. Ray Chapman was another uh, champion shooter and, um, and an expert, and he said, smoothness is five-sixths of speed. So go for smoothness, and speed will take care of itself, all right? He also talked about the rock and lock concept, and we're going to demonstrate that a little bit now. So if I were to be attacked, uh, the, the usual way to handle that is for, and I'm a right hand shooter, so my non-dominant hand is going to grab my cover garment, pull it up as high as possible, while with the minimum amount of movement I get onto my holster, get a good grip. Now this is a level two uh, holster, Blackhawk holster. It's got a button right here, release button. My fingers on that. As I press that, I can pull the uh, firearm out of the holster. Now, my as soon as I clear the holster, I can rock it up. My elbow goes back. I'm rocked into this position. If I needed to fire in a very close encounter, I have got the ability to do that from right here. Or I can extend and get onto the target and if need be, if I need to shoot, then my finger is going to go onto the trigger and I'm going to pull the trigger. This is why we don't uh, practice pulling the trigger every time because you may not always have to. So let's look at that again, the rock and lock. Pull up my shirt, good grip, finger disengages the, the safety on this holster. I come up, as soon as I clear the holster, I rock, I extend, I'm on, if I need to shoot, fingers on, I shoot. All right, rock and lock. And that is, um, I think, a very good method to remember. He goes on to say, as a general rule, those who carry guns uh, for real probably should make at least 90% of their drawing practice to the gun point and uh, not draw to a shot because you don't want to automatically shoot somebody because that's the way you've practiced. You don't want to do that when you don't have to. Okay. So he go, also he says, while gun handling is not a perishable skill, you won't totally lose your ability with this. It certainly can get corrosion prone and it can get rusty if you don't practice. So the skills uh, don't really die, but they get rusty fast, so you need to practice, 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 all right? He also says, uh, this is again Masada, I hope, do yourself a favor and get a holster with a safety strap. If it has a thumb brake release, there will be little, if any, sacrifice in drawing speed uh, so long as you practice with it. 
And, wh and I think that to go one more from that statement, this kind of retention, this won't come out unless you press this button. And this is a great holster. I don't have to mess with any kind of a thumb brake here. My finger is in the position it should be. I press and I can pull, rock, extend. This really is a great holster. I like it. It's a Serpa, a Blackhawk Serpa. Mr. Meyer went on to say, I went on to say, when you draw a handgun from its holster, make sure that your finger does not enter the trigger guard, uh, and also when you reholster, your finger should be on the holster and not in the trigger because you can obviously shoot yourself in the leg, and I've seen that happen in training. I watched a student uh, shoot a 45, 1911-45, misses like, thank goodness, into the floor bust out a piece of concrete on the floor, hit the instructor in the leg, make a big gouge, the instructor's leg blood, and so on. So anyway, it does happen, all right? Anyway, that's what we wanted to talk about tonight was drawing from the holster, the modern thoughts on this, the modern holsters, the modern uh, techniques, and I encourage you to go read about this some more. Look up uh, David Kinnick, Armed Response, Mossad, IOB, Combat Headgunner, you know and a zillion other books he's written um, and I think you'll you'll be impressed and need and get what you need to know so once again thanks for joining us and uh, we'll say see you later